Hey, my name is Vishal Bakshi, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I implemented a custom test time augmentation method for an image classification model using the FastAI library. This exercise is part of the Chapter 7 Further Research section in the FastAI course textbook. The link to it is in the video description below. The prompt for this exercise is as follows. Use the FastAI documentation to build a function that crops an image to a square in each of the four corners. Then implement a TTA method that averages the predictions on a center crop and those four crops. Did it help? Is it better than the TTA method of FastAI? I'll start by reviewing the definition of test time augmentation. During inference or validation, creating multiple versions of each image using data augmentation and taking the average or maximum of the predictions for each augmented version of the image. So TTA is data augmentation during validation in hope that objects located outside of the image center, which is the default FastAI validation crop, can be recognized by the model in order to increase the model's accuracy. I created this visual to illustrate an example. Let's say I have an original validation set image shown here at the top. The FastAI default learner.tta method uses the model's predictions on the center crop and four randomly generated crops. The method I'll create, corner crop TTA, will average the predictions between the center crop and four corner crops. I took the following approach to complete this exercise. My first task was to read and understand the learner.tta method and the random crop transform class definition enough that I could modify it to fit the needs of my new TTA method. Next, I practiced cropping images using the crop method of a pill image object. Then I defined a function which takes an image and returns a stacked tensor with four corner crops and a center crop. I then defined a new corner crop transform class by extending the existing transform class definition. Finally, I defined a new learner.cornerCropTTA method by repurposing the existing TTA definition and implemented it on the ImageNet classification model. My TTA method was significantly less accurate than the existing FastAI TTA method. So let's go through this. I'll start by looking at the existing TTA learner method from the FastAI library. At its core, it loops over a range with a default length of 4 and appends the prediction for the validation data set in a list. Then, if use max is true, it takes the maximum set of predictions. Otherwise, it averages the four sets. Then it creates a new validation data set, which takes the default center crop and calculates the predictions on those. Finally, if use max is true, it returns the maximum between the center crop predictions and the augmented predictions. If use max is false, and beta is none, it returns a tuple with the center crop and augmented prediction tensors. If beta is not none, it linearly interpolates between the two sets of predictions. Beta times the difference between the augmented and center crop predictions is added to the augmented predictions. I'll refer to the PyTorch 
documentation here. The input parameter is assigned the augmented predictions. The end parameter is assigned the center crop predictions. And the weight parameter is assigned beta. The output is the input start plus weight beta times the difference between end center crop predictions and start augmented predictions. For my TTA method, I'll reuse much of this code, except instead of using maximum or linear interpolation, I'll average the augmented and center crop predictions. The random crop transform is the next piece of FastAI code that I want to understand to help me design my own transform. At its core, if the difference between the original image height or width is smaller, than the desired crop size. A negative value for that dimension is randomly chosen between negative one and that negative difference. Otherwise, if the original height or width are larger than the crop size, a positive value is randomly chosen between zero and that positive difference. The original image is then cropped or padded if the crop size is larger than the original size and returned. I'll use a similar approach, except I'll have four crops to choose from, one from each corner. Next, I practice crops on a test image to make sure I understand how the pill image objects crop method works. Here's an image with a grizzly bear at the top and a black bear on the bottom. There are four coordinates of interest, left, upper, right, and bottom. The leftmost points on the image are assigned a pixel value of zero. The rightmost points are located at the image width pix pixel value. The uppermost points are at pixel zero, and the bottommost points are at the image height pixel value. A top left corner crop corresponds to a left pixel of 0, upper pixel of 0, right pixel of 224, and bottom pixel of 224. The order in the tuple is left, upper, right, bottom. So 0, 0, 224, 224. You can see that this crop is taken from the top left corner of the original image. For the top right corner, I get the image width since the left end of the crop will be 224 pixels from the right end of the image. That translates to W minus 224. The upper pixel is 0, and the rightmost pixel is at W, and the bottom pixel is 224. You can see that this crop is at the top right corner of the original. For the bottom right corner, the left pixel is 224 from the right end, W minus 224. The upper pixel is 224 from the bottom, H minus 224. The right pixel is at W, and the bottom is at H.
the bottom left corner's leftmost pixel is 0, uppermost pixel is 224 pixels from the bottom of the whole image, h minus 224. The rightmost pixel is 224, and the bottommost pixel is at the bottom of the whole image, at h. Finally, for the center crop, the leftmost pixel is 112 left of the image center, w over 2 minus 112. The upper pixel is 112 above the image center, h over 2 minus 112. The rightmost pixel is 112 right of the center, w over 2 plus 112. And the bottom pixel is 112 below the center, h over 2 plus 112. To better visualize this, here are a couple of images which show the left, upper, right, and bottom coordinates for the corner and center crops. I wrap those five lines of code into a function called corner crop, which takes an pill image IMG and a square side length size, default 224, as its arguments. It first grabs the width and height of the image, and then goes on to save the crops of the four corners and center as tensor images, returning them all in a single stacked tensor. I'll test the corner crop function and make sure that the five images are cropped correctly. Here's the top left corner. Top right corner. Bottom right, bottom left, and center. The main purpose for all of that was for me to wrap my head around how the crop behavior functions so that I can wrap that into a transform. Transforms are any function that you want to apply to your data. I'll extend the base transform class and add in the functionality I need for these crops. When an object of this class is constructed, the constructor takes size and corner type arguments. Since I'll use this within a for loop, the corner type argument is an integer from 0 to 3 corresponding to the loop counter. The transform is applied to the data during the encodes method. I grab the original image uh, width and height. I grab the original image width and height and create a list of cropped images using the left, upper, right, bottom coordinates we saw above. Finally, based on the corner type, the corresponding crop is returned. To test this transform, I created an image with top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left identified. 
I created multiple copies so that I can create batches. I create a data block and pass my corner crop to the item transforms parameter. I'll cycle through the different corner types. Zero corresponds to top left, one is top right, two is bottom right, and three is bottom left. All images in my batch should be cropped to the same corner. I set corner type to zero, build the data block and data loaders, and and the batch shows top left. I set the corner type to one, build the data block and data loaders, and the batch shows top right. Corner type is two. The batch shows bottom right. Corner type is three, and the batch shows bottom left. Now I can implement this transform into a new TTA method. In the existing for loop, four sets of predictions on randomly generated crops are appended into a list. In my loop, I create a new data loader each time passing a different corner type argument to the corner crop transform. I also have to pass the two tensor transform so that the pill image is converted to a tensor. In the first iteration, it will append predictions on the top left corner crops. In the next one, it'll append predictions on the top right, then the bottom right, and finally on the fourth loop, the bottom left. I'll then create a new data loader without the corner crop transform and get predictions on the default center crop validation images. Finally, I'll average the four augmented predictions and the center crop predictions. I created a new Learner2 class extending the Learner class so that it contains both the existing TTA method and my new corner crop TTA method. Here, my loop uses the corner crop transform. The line of code for the center crop predictions And the line of code where augmented and center crop predictions get averaged. In the last section of this notebook, I train a model on the ImageNet dataset, which is a subset of the larger ImageNet dataset. ImageNet has 10 distinct classes. I download it using untar data and passing it the URL. I build a data block for single label classification, so it uses the category block for the dependent variable. The image folders are the class names, so I'll use the parent label function to get Y values. I'll resize the images to 460 pixels, and then resize the batches down to 224 by 224 pixels using at least 75% of the image. I create the data loaders and view a batch. That looks good. I want to make sure that my transform works as well. So I'll create a new data loader and pass it a pipeline of transforms. First, my corner crop that grabs the bottom left corner and then the two tensor transform to convert from a pill image to tensor. OK, 
Okay, that seems to work okay. I'll train the model using the X ResNet 50 architecture as they do in the textbook for five epochs at a 0 0.003 maximum learning rate. I get about 82.4% accuracy on the validation set using the default center crop. I've run the default TTA method, pass the predictions and targets to the accuracy function, and calculate an accuracy of about 83.5%. Which is higher than the default center crop validation accuracy. Finally, I run my new corner crop TTA method, pass the predictions and targets to the accuracy function, and calculate an accuracy of about 71.6%, which is lower than the default center crop validation accuracy. I'll walk through the corner crop TTA code step by step to confirm the calculated accuracy. I first create an empty list for my augmented image predictions. Then I loop through a range of four, each time creating a new data loader, which applies the corner crop transform for each corner type and append the predictions onto the list. There are four sets of predictions in that list, and each one has this shape. I then create a new data loader without my transform and get those predictions. The shape of these predictions is missing an axis. So I pass none as a key and it adds on a new axis. I append the center crop predictions onto the augmented predictions and concatenate all five sets of predictions into a tensor and calculate the mean. I then pass those average predictions and the targets to the accuracy function, calculate the accuracy, which is slightly higher than above. I ran these five cells multiple times and got the same accuracy value. When I ran the corner crop TTA method multiple times, I got different accuracy values each time. Something in the corner crop TTA definition is incorrect. I'll go with this value since it was consistent. I'll summarize the results in this table updating the accuracy values from what they were the previous time I ran this notebook. There are a few further research items I should pursue in the future. One is to try to fix the corner crop TTA method so that it returns the same accuracy each time it's run on the same trained model. Another is to try the corner crop TTA method on a multi-label classification data set, such as Pascal. And finally, I could try linear interpolation between center crop and corner crop maximum predictions instead of mean. That's where I'll end this video. A link to this notebook and the associated blog post, as well as other references, are posted in the video description below. Thanks for watching, 
and make sure to subscribe as I'll be posting more videos on the Fast AI course and other machine learning projects I'm working on in the future.